And here we are. This is the very first thing we see. This is as far as I can zoom out now, but I can explore a little bit here. I've gone with a uh, generally flat, flatter land. That's just personal preference, really, for me. In a game like this, I tend to like to dig down and build downwards instead of building upwards. Especially because up here is mostly where the enemies spawn. This is the land. We are playing no Moria, no mods, regular options. And let's get started, shall we? Up here we have all of our menus to choose from at the very top of the screen. This one's the kingdom menu. This gives us just a general overview. It says our population is nine. It tells you how many workshops, farms, pastures, and your total worth. Now, the total worth, it's very important because the higher this is, the more furiously, I guess I would say, the goblins come after you. Meaning, they'll have more upgraded armor, they'll have bigger, meatier ogres that they'll bring along with them, more experienced fighters, the warlords will start coming for you, that kind of thing. You know, in the beginning when your worth is very low, just like bandits and peasant goblins basically are coming for you. But once your worth starts getting high, then again, you start having the more advanced goblins. Now worth also, at the end of every at the end of every uh, sum, what's the word I'm looking for? Season. Up at the top right corner it says the first day of spring year one. Every season has a set number of days, and I believe it's 13 or 14, but when that season ends, depending on our total worth, we might have some new nomads arrive. So that's something you want to bear in mind. You know, if you want more people, then you want to increase your worth, but by increasing your worth, you're going to have more difficult enemies coming. We look under the Diplomacy tab, the only thing that shows up is a Merchant City State. We'll worry about that later. Workshops, farms, pastures, rooms, I have none of these, so nothing's going to show up here. Up at the top again, we have stocks. Now this is where you see all of the items that you have in the game. See now goods, if you click goods, it'll tell you all of the goods you have. See we have, this is what we start out with basically. Seeds, fruit, bread, wine, bandages, straws, and then if we get rid of that, we have one sword, one helmet, and one breastplate. They are all of the copper. As tools go, we start out with two pickaxes and two felling axes. Now you need pickaxes in order to mine. It's not like they're going to go slower. It's not like the pickaxe improves. They actually physically need the pickaxe to do any mining. The same with the felling axes to cut trees. The two that they give you will last for a while, and it's not very long before we're able to craft these ourselves. Although we will not be able to craft ones out of metal for quite a while. We're going to be basically just making them out of stone. And then tracked items is definitely something I want to touch up on. Because the first two are food and drink. Now this applies to all of your food. And then this applies to all of the drink. So if you want to set up something custom you would just type new and I'm going to put meals meals and what I want for meals I want the good stuff not just raw strawberries apples oranges that kind of stuff laying around oh, I want the good stuff like loaves of bread sausages prepared foods sandwiches omelets that type of thing so none, none of the apples, none, yeah, none of the fruit, none of the eggs or meats, because egg and meat are considered, those are raw. Now the reason why I like to keep track of the meals is because the better the food and the better the drink quality, the longer your gnome will have to go without consuming food or water. When you start getting to where your gnomes are creating legendary items of sandwiches, then they go like a week or something like that without eating. So it must have been a really good sandwich if you're not hungry for an entire week. Nothing else could compare to how good that sandwich was. That You just don't even want anything. And to clear it, 
you just double click that. So I am actually going to leave that one there. We're going to move on to population. Now this will be a little bit more advanced as we go, but this is just a general overview. It shows all of our jobs. Miner, Mason, Stone Carver, Woodcutter. I'm not going to go through all of them. There are quite a bit of them. Now these are all the jobs that the game if you see here under assign the next one the game has made these jobs for you builder farmer miner rancher woodcutter this is okay they're they're okay if you don't really know what you're doing me however I like to kind of play with these as the game goes by for example in the beginning your miners are only going to be doing mining masonry and stone carving anything to do with stone that's pretty much it and they also have hauling they won't do any construction they won't do any of these things unless you give them permission to so really for the beginning of the game I like to make kind of a custom and I'm gonna call it custom one and basically custom one is going to do everything that the beginning of the game requires because there's not a lot of jobs and you can set your job so I'll be you know I'll tell them you can make this you can make this but then that is it and then I will move him to something else now as the game progresses and we get a lot more gnomes it makes a lot more sense to have somebody just mining and then have his house somewhere down below in the caverns and then the same for the farmers you'd want to have his bedroom right up next by the farm and that's all he's going to be doing is farming but for the beginning we don't really have enough gnomes to get things going the way I like to. We don't have enough gnomes to have them just doing one specific thing. So I'm going to finish this out by having agriculture, rancher as well, hauling, construction, and doctor. Now as far as the building options on the right go, the job top priority, it's kind of in the middle of the screen. You have mining, agriculture, build, mechanic, hospital, workshop, farm, grove, pasture, tinker, and hauling. Basically that is from the top to the bottom the priority that they will do these jobs that you have assigned. For example, if you've told them to go ahead and mine out an entire floor and mining is at the top, they will not do anything else until that mining is finished. Now they will go and eat and sleep, drink, all that good stuff, but they will not take on any other jobs until that mining is finished. So you want to kind of be careful of what you set as your jobs. Now I'm also going to do custom 2 and that will be a little different. He's going to be doing construction, hauling, and very specifically crafting. I don't want him doing any mining, I don't want him chopping trees or agriculture or any, I want him very specifically doing carving, carpentry, well not wood carving and stone carving, masonry and carpentry, stone carving and wood carving come on later when you have extra materials and you have merchants coming in and you want to sell them little statues to get better things. We're also going to put all of the metal, weaving, tailoring, and the misc craft we need a leather worker a bone carver pottery and prospecting will stay off and we also need cook and brewer now this will be specifically for crafting so if I tend to notice that things aren't getting made I'm gonna switch them over to custom 2 which will be custom to crafter there we go now you don't have to actually hit save or anything you can just hit X and it should save all your options for you you just scroll down to custom 2 custom 1 okay now we go to assign and the very first thing I am going to do so I'm going to go ahead and assign two names to people first of course is me Supreme Leader of No Moria. And if you hit back, it will show the name, the old name there. But if I hit X and then I click Population again and go back to Assign, it has been changed. 
So you actually have to hit X. Like, I think the X is the save button. So then we also have... to find a good one here. To find out their skills, you will select an individual gnome. You have health. Obviously, they're in good health. Nothing else will show. If they're missing limbs or they're bleeding or hurt in any way, it will show up here. Equipment. Obviously, nobody has anything equipped yet. I haven't told anybody to equip anything yet. Gnomes will generally not equip anything except for what is set for the default. And the way... Uh, let's continue with this. Skills. Well, this one's quite skillful. I'm not worried about task skills. Sure, it's nice to have a larger starting task skill, like hauling and construction are pretty high on this particular gnome, but the skills rise very rapidly the more you use that, or you use the gnome for a particular task, like construction. Every time they're constructing, they're going to gain a little bit of experience in construction. So this 20, after, you know, year two, will be maybe up to 40 or 50. So that's not what I'm concerned about at all. Now our combat skills, which is just below attributes, attributes and combat skills gain a bonus from your task skills. For example, a task like mining is very physically demanding, so you're going to be using your muscles, therefore you're brawling, I believe. I'm not quite sure 100%, I'd have to get a look at the stats in front of me, but it's either brawling or one of your fighting skills will go up because of this. So once you start seeing your skills up in, you know, near 100, your combat skills are going to increase, ex increase exponentially. Finally, we have Profession. And like I said, the, uh, the ones that they give you, they're okay. But I am going to go with my own professions. So, Ivar, you will be Custom 1. And also, your real name that only we know about. Cellfire the Elite Warlord. All right, and then we hit X and that will save that person's name. Now, I don't know a better way to do this other than going to each individual person through here. But for now, those are the only two I'm gonna have named. If you'd like to have your name and you'd like to join us, please leave your name in the comment section and I will add that as soon as possible. I can change the names at any time. So just because we have someone named Juan, we're not stuck with him. Or let me try to let me try to pronounce this. Fishwem Kurtlero. Fishwem Kurtlero. That's an interesting name. Father must have been a fisherman, mother must have been a Wem Kurtlero, whatever that is. <laughs> Moving on, I'm going to set everybody right now custom one. Except one person is going to be a rancher, and I'll tell you why in a moment. We're going to look at the rancher skills. Now, the rancher has leather working, I'm going to take that off. But I always want at least one person will take off cooking. No, we'll leave farming. I always want one person to be taking care of the animals and the farms. I don't want him to do anything else except hauling when he has nothing else to do. So we'll put pasture and farms at the top and that's basically all he's been allowed to do. He's been allowed to ranch, farm, and haul. He's not even allowed to do construction, so he's basically very limited to what he's going to be doing. But it's very easy in this game to lose track of taking care of your animals. And for your, your animals to produce, somebody needs to actually produce that item on the animal. So for example, the yaks produce milk. The rancher will need to go to the yak when it's ready to produce the milk and milk it. And if he doesn't, then it's just sitting there eating my food and not doing anything. So that's why I like to have somebody permanently set. And we're actually going to change his name as well. To Rancher. That way if he ever dies, I'll know. It'll say your Rancher has died and then I'll change the next guy to Rancher. So that's that. 
Now, the first thing I like to do is since I've picked a pretty much flat land, it doesn't really matter where I build. Although, I do want a location pretty close to the water for a well. So basically where I am right now is good. And then the first thing I do is we're going to fell some trees to make room for farms. And then before we do that, we're actually going to build a very small farm, 5x5, five five. it's priority be 1. And here's why. We need wheat as soon as we can possibly have it. The very second I have the wheat, I'm going to be using it. In the beginning, wheat is used for beds and also for feeding your yaks. And if your yaks that you start out with don't have any food, they're just going to up and leave. They're going to walk to the edge of the map and then they'll be gone forever. And if you don't have a male and a female after that happens, well, you uh, kind of have to wait for a trader to come by and they do not give you any good deals on livestock. In fact, the more the game progresses, I've noticed, the more the traders charge for the items that they give. Now, next what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and forge, forge up these strawberries and this cotton that's in the way. And then I'm going to fell these trees as well. That way we'll have plenty of room for our farm. And then I will also start digging downwards. Stairs down. Now, you click it. If you go down below to the next level, you can actually already tell them to go down a couple stairs. And they're going to queue up these. So when they cut down the one stair, then they'll go down to the next stair. I want to go till at least rock. Because we're going to need rock before we can do pretty much anything. We're going to need stone and just rock. Now, I believe I've gotten just about everything done there. So now, remove ramps. I'm going to start making somewhat of a defensive wall for our gnomes. Now, I do have the ability for the goblins to go... They, if you block the goblins from being able to enter your kingdom, the next time they're going to bring a tunneler, and that tunneler is going to dig a tunnel through your defenses and basically walk right into... they're going to walk right into your kingdom wherever they want. So you can wall them off, and then that'll give you time to prepare for the next attack. Or, one thing that I like to do is I like to kind of leave one little entrance open. Right next to my training barracks, where I will usually always have one or two soldiers forever training. They're basically, I mean in the beginning we're going to have everyone constructing and mining and all of that just so we can get started up. But Eventually, you're going to have just warrior gnomes. They won't do anything else, even when enemies aren't around. They're just going to be honing their combat skills. So I'm going to go ahead and press play and get things started here. Now, oh, of course, we get the autosave. And it pauses the game on you. There's the sound effects. Those are neat. Now, the yaks need quite a large room for their pasture. But I do have quite a bit of space right here. And you don't need to set the priority. Regular priority is fine. Changing the priority on pastures will basically, they'll fill up that pasture before they fill up one with a lower priority. But since it's, I mean I have two animals right now, there's really no need to do any more than that. Now the rancher should, there we go, rancher, she is picking up the uh, X taking them to their home. And everything is moving around very smoothly. I don't see anybody just standing around not doing anything. So that means I've pretty much given everybody enough tasks to accomplish. I do want to set the pro oh, okay I did. The priority on that farm is one. Right. Have we dug down yet? We have. Alright. So I'm going to just completely skip the first floor for now. And that will come into play later when I'm doing defenses. The second floor is going to be our primary stockpiling area. 
trees and food will come from the top and we'll stockpile everything in here and I'm going to do my workshops one floor below that and then one floor below that we'll do our housing one floor below that we'll do ambassador housing and the great hall and then any further than that we're going to start running into the problems where enemies will be spawning I don't think they spawn up until uh, seven or eight again I'd have to check to be sure now we have we're having gnomes just kind of wandering around because only two of them can mine only two can tree cut so I'm gonna assign some more foraging because the worst thing I think right now I could have is somebody just standing around doing nothing right and we'll play again okay everybody is moving now good so when they're done planting that field they will go and get to work on the foraging I have a, a few more trees here I need to cut down Now, one thing that I'm going to mention, I really dug a kind of big hole right here. That is not something that you want to do later on, because there are things called golems that will spawn out of large areas of things like dirt or uh, stone or even, I think, iron bars. So if you, like, if you wanted to make a really strong golem, because you can kill the golems and take their cores and make automatons, but that is going to be very far from now. So this first stockpile, I'm just going to put soil, and when you do that, you have to remove clay, because I don't want them to bring clay here. Clay will actually be very useful later on, and I'd rather have that stockpile somewhere else. So for now, this stockpile is just going to be soil, and as soon as they finish clearing out these walls, I'm going to expand it. And then on this side over here, as soon as it's finished, I'm going to build a stone stockpile so that they can start bringing stone in. Now I might need to, because golems are a problem. They, especially early on in the game, a golem can kill several unarmed, undefended gnomes. So I'm going to actually put hauling a little bit up. I don't want to put it above workshop. We'll put it there for now. Now again, as soon as they're done with the farming and the foraging, they should go straight to hauling. Yep, there we go. We're starting to clean up very nicely in here. Because there's only two pickaxes and only two axes, so they can't really, you know, they would they would prefer to mine, they would prefer to chop down trees, but they just can't yet. And later on I'll have a humongous stockpile of extra pickaxes and axes because it's pretty easy to just forget and then you you have no resources and you're like, oh, why, why aren't you guys doing what I told you? Well, because they can't. This is starting to look very nice. Now did I accidentally remove the stairs down? I would guess I did. Alright, we're gonna put another one there. There we go. When I told them to mine out everything, I must have uh, messed up what they were doing. Alright, we're gonna designate another stockpile. This one will also be priority one because golems do spawn from raw stone. And I'm just going to put raw stone in here. If I clicked stone, they'd put all of this junk in there. And I don't want all that in there. This is just going to be purely for raw stones. Which I don't have any yet. But that's going to be coming soon. I'd really like you guys to dig a little further. So, workshop. And then... We're going to mine the wall out just a little bit here so we can build a public sleeping area and some beds. Let's check on everything up here. Okay, we're doing pretty good on these. I'm going to start construction of an outer wall. Now, where is the construction on this one? I prefer to use build down here. Terrain, wall. 
Now there's two ways you can use the uh, you can use the bottom one, which you can also use your numbers on your keyboard, or you can right click and pick from the drop down menu. So build terrain wall. Now the only wall really we can build right now is just plain dirt. And if you, you do want to select dirt, not any clump, because then you're gonna have a bunch of clay clumps randomly in your wall. And that just does not look nice. So I'm gonna take the wall from here. We're gonna go up. And we're gonna fell the trees that are in the way in those trees only. Just so we can kind of streamline what trees are being cut down. And I'm actually gonna cancel the job. If you go to job and cancel, you can cancel those. Because defenses right now are a little bit more important. I don't need a bear showing up and eating my people because, you know, he got trapped in a corner and he decided he was going to fight instead of flee. And they will do that. Most wild animals will try to flee. And that's not like the circus flee, that's the running away flee. If, you, uh, if they come across something that, you know, a gnome or a goblin. But if you back them into a corner, they will fight you. Right, our, we're going to set designate area dormitory and I'm going to build some straw beds two three four now that means only four people are going to be able to sleep in a bed at a time but I do not want to go too crazy through my straw stocks because like I said the yaks need them otherwise they're just going to leave us we're going to get a dirt wall over on this side as well. And we're going to fell the trees that are in the way here. Right, these trees are all down. Now because of this wall is here, if they need to go outside, they're going to have to take a long way around. Although, I haven't really cut down or done anything on this side of the wall, so depending on where these logs end up, it should be mostly okay. So now I also need to remove the ramps. Remove ramp here. Up to here. And then if you zoom in, you can get a better look. I'm going to build dirt clump wall going out going out like here okay, they are finished bring that all the way to here there we go now we just need to finish felling these trees here <coughs> excuse me now once this wall here is complete the only access to my base will be through this side here. And then of course, terrain, remove floor, or remove ramp, excuse me. I'm going to take away any ramps coming off of him. So like these ones here. Not this one, I don't want him to get stuck. I'm going to remove those ramps there. Alright, they finished cutting down those trees, so we can build a dirt clump wall. Now you gotta pay real close attention to your depth. I'm at one, so if I tried to build the wall here, they'd actually build it on top of this thing. And that's definitely not what I want. Okay. How far down have we gotten? Wonderful, we have hit stone. So again, I'm only going to do small tracks at a time. And then if I notice that there's no stone laying around, then I will go and just kind of mine up some more. And I don't want to go any lower than this until I have torches. Now you can craft torches and place torches around the world in the dark areas, and then they will stop enemies from spawning. And I don't remember exactly, but it's a certain number of panels that will stop the enemies from spawning. I like to cancel any jobs that I give them that they can't do right away because it does kind of confuse them a little bit. All 
right, let's finish the wall. Make that out of dirt. Again, my depth needs to be correct. And then we're gonna come down here as well. Now I can't build it in that corner for some reason. Oh, there's a tree there. All right, we'll go here then. And then we'll just bring it across like that. And fell the trees in the way. Perfect. And we have almost a full wall built. Probably go ahead and designate a small stockpile now for the clay. And that could be kind of a lower priority. Make sure it's clay only, not dirt. So that when they don't really have much else to do, they'll go and haul the clay, which they're already doing because they don't have much else to do. Right, we have some stone, finally. So I can dig out a little space here. And I'm going to start setting up my first workshop. Oh no, people are falling asleep on the floor. Now, the way this works is the better the bed, the less sleep that they're going to require. Meaning they'll be more productive because they'll be able to work more hours in between goblin raids. So you're going to want to upgrade their beds and, of course, get them beds as soon as possible. Fortunately, there's not too much I can do about that in the beginning. Check my rock, my rancher. Okay, she is currently still hauling. Okay. Definitely don't want anyone just standing around doing nothing. Now, as soon as everybody wakes up, they'll probably finish this wall pretty quickly. And the mining. The mining will take precedence. Unfortunately, since people have already picked up the mine, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the pickaxes, it's in their hands, and they are the only ones now who are going to be doing the mining. Now, they can pick up an axe and put down the mine, although, or the uh, pickaxe, and pick up a regular axe, but I have seen them hold one of each, kind of greedily, and I believe you can go under, uh, yeah, you can probably tell them under uniforms. We're going to get into the military next episode. We're already dragging on just a little bit too long here, so I'm going to put this on 4X just to get our gnomes awake. Even the ones with beds have been sleeping a pretty long time. The sun's up, folks. Come on, let's go. There's work to be done before the goblins show up and kill us all. Ah, there we go. Beautiful. All right, slow that down. We're going to build our first workshop, which is going to be a crude workbench. And because I am picky and I like picking what color, I'm going to go with apple wood and raw marble. And I'm just going to place two of these for now. And now that we've picked up all this dirt, we can go ahead and mine a little bit more. Now our miners have already picked another job to do, so until they're finished with that other job, these won't get done, but as soon as they finish the other job, or eating, or drinking, or whatever it is they're currently doing, they'll immediately go to mining, because mining is set at such a high priority. We have our first workbench being crafted, and placed. Now these can't do much, but you do need them to be able to build the other workbenches. There we go, our wall is looking pretty near complete. And if you press the uh, space bar, that will pause the game quickly for you. F will bring down the walls so you can kind of get a better look at what's behind them. So here I see that the tree is actually gone. So I can just finish that wall there. Let's get that going again. We're going to build dirt clump wall here. 
Now, until I get my military set up, I am going to kind of imprison my gnomes. Nobody can get out, nobody can get in, but, again, if an enemy were to show up right now, everybody would just run and cower in fear because nobody's been set to military. No one's been set to fight. They'll all just run away. Like disorganized peons. Right, now there's ramps on the other side of this wall, but A, there's no floor, so no one can walk on top of these walls. And there would have to be a ramp on the other side for them to be able to get inside my base. Right, here we have our workshops. Crude workbench done. As far as, I'm going to have one of these always making planks until I disable the building itself. But the other guy, I'm going to specifically tell him to craft just some simple things so that we can get... And I'm actually going to turn the priority up. Well, now these are the only two workshops I have, so... Right, now that the wall is complete, it is time to set some of our gnomes to craft only. And I'm actually going to set two of them to craft only. And they should, they're going to grab a drink. Afterwards, they should come down here. Unless I've done something wrong. Crafter. Oh. How'd that happen? I thought I had set this up properly. I might have hit back now that I'm thinking about it. No problem. Quick fix. You're a cook. And that is it. And then we're going to put workshop at the very top. There we go. Now it's proper. They're both going to immediately jump into those workshops and start crafting. Right, now let's go ahead and start clearing away mass tracts of land. All of the food foraged, all the cotton, chop all the trees, let's get all these apples, strawberry. I'm not going to worry about setting up a grove quite yet, I'm going to wait until I actually have room. And then once I get all the trees cleared away from somewhere, I'll probably set up a grove. Now meals, we can eat strawberries and fruit for a pretty long time. Once we start getting a good number of gnomes, those will just not be enough to keep us alive. And drinks, we have a lot of drinks that we came here with. But pretty quickly, or pretty much right off the bat, you're going to want to build a well. Now wells take blocks, and we haven't built a stone cutter or a stone worker or any of that yet. For that, we're going to need the chair and the workbench and the chisel that they are producing. That will come in time. We are completely walled off, and we are just about to end day two. Well, that'll gonna have to do it for the uh, very first episode of Nomoria, so please leave me uh, some feedback in the comment section. Like I said, if you want to join our little colony here, we have plenty of names. And I will probably have somewhere around 50 gnomes towards the end of this. So lots of room for you, for uh, newcomers to join. Again, any feedback, any comments, anything I can do to improve your viewing experience, please let me know. Till then, I appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you next time.